guys, welcome to the next episode of Luke's Landings. Today we're going to be putting the front end of the, the white girl back together here. Um, we got all our bits together, it's all cleaned up. We just got to stick the brake calipers back together, grease the bearings and hubs and stick them all on and we'll be right to go. So yeah, hope you enjoy. Um, like and subscribe. So guys, we got our parts here, got them from Bear Mac in the UK, delivered in three days from the UK to Brisbane, Australia, which is pretty good if you ask me. Um, so yeah, we got our, our brake rotors and our pads, which come with um, the new pins and springs and everything, because like you probably saw in the last one, there wasn't much left of them. So yeah, new springs, new pins, new split pins, because yeah, the other ones are pretty short there somewhere if it'll focus yeah anyway they're buggered you saw me having to drive them out with a hammer pretty hard and all the springs were disintegrated so we've got all our pistons and brakes all cleaned up ready to go back together there's the spaces for the vented rotors um, your pistons which aren't mint but They'll work just just fine. Um, get our old rotors pulled off down there. Um, they're actually pretty bad once I got to really look at them. But yeah, so got our hubs all clean. Well, the insides of them all cleaned up, and the mounting surfaces for the new rotors are all cleaned up. So yeah, um, let's get to it. We'll stick the brake calipers back together first. So then when we're playing around with rotors and hubs we don't fill them all with dirt and stuff like that so yeah let's get to it so guys for you those of you who haven't actually seen inside a brake caliper basically they're super basic you've got in this little groove there there's these square section seals like this one that sit in it and they are what return the piston and in this top groove is literally just a dust seal and that's it piston goes inside it and when the piston goes through your seal so you got your seal obviously they don't move this much but it's hard to show you with little movement so when you put your foot on the brake the piston comes out and rolls the seal like it's trying to pull it out of the groove and then when you let your foot off the seal resets and pulls the piston back and that's it. That's just how easy brake calipers are. That's all there is to them. So, super easy. One seal per piston and then one dust seal. So, I'll show you how to stick them back together and um, then I'm going to paint them up and look pretty. So, they look pretty. And, um, yeah, stick them back on. So, guys, here's our um, new genuine seal kit. Um, I'll show you how to, I'll, I'll just do one side and I'll show you how to do it. They're all exactly the same. Most brake calipers on most cars will be pretty much the same, same practice. These are quad piston calipers, so got to do it four times per caliper. Um, most brake, most brakes on most normal cars are only twin piston. They've got two and then they've got a slide that acts on it. But yeah, these ones are four, so I'll show you how to do them, and we'll get to it. So first things first, you grab your square seal like that. Just feed her in. Make sure you don't get any twists or rolls in it. And it'll just go in and sit in its little groove. Nice and flat. Just like that. Get the other one. So you can see there, new seals are in both sides, easy as that. So now we'll put the dust seal in them. I'll show you how to do that. Hopefully they can be a little bit tricky, but should be right. So you get your little steel bit of the dust seal. And so to tell the difference between your square section and your dust seal, the dust seal's got a little groove in the center of it.
and it'll just sit in just like that nice and pretty get it sit it in its little hole find your block of wood so you get your bit of wood and you just Give her a tap, make sure it's all going in alright. Sits a little bit high on that back edge there still, so we'll just dust seal in. And this one's exactly the same. So guys, we're gonna stick piston in it now. You can buy proper brake caliper lube and it works really well, but I actually don't have any. I thought I did have some, but I don't. So just going to use brake fluid. You don't want to use grease or oil or anything like that because one, you'll contaminate your brake fluid and two, it can actually make the seals swell up and ruin them. So don't be shy with the brake fluid. You want it nice and lubricated. So it doesn't matter if you spill it everywhere. Because the last thing you want to do while you're putting the piston in is grab the seal and roll the seal out. So, nice clean brake fluid. Then literally you just sit it in past the dust seal. Like that. And that's it. Piston's installed. Next one will be exactly the same. And there you go, pistons are installed and that's a rebuilt brake caliper right there. Just do the exact same thing with the other half and bolt it together and we'll be done. There we go guys, second caliper, all assembled, ready to paint it up, so I'll go set them up outside and give them a quick lick. So guys, got the caterpillars out here all painted up, got to wait for them to dry, shouldn't take too long, it's pretty hot out here today, so we'll um, go assemble those hubs so they can get ready to go back on. So guys, for those of you that haven't packed wheel bearings before, or haven't done it much, this is how I've been taught to do it, and been doing it for like 15 years, so, and I've never had one go wrong, so, you take your bearing, you get your grease in the hand like that, you're going to get real dirty doing it, so you get your grease in your hand like that, you get your bearing, you hold the um, outside edge of it, put it to the grease, and what you want to do is just take little bites at it like that until you'll see it start to push through the top like that so then what you do is you just go right around until it all comes out so now you can see guys I sort of messed it messed, made it messy over here but all the way around got those nice little lines coming out between the rollers so you know it's fully packed it's going to have plenty of grease to lubricate it as it goes around and then what you want to do is you just want to get any excess and just spread it over the rollers make sure it's all nice and covered any little gaps that it's got it'll sort out once you start driving it and spinning them up yeah so 
That's how you graze a wheel bearing. Right riders, ventilated ones, look at that. Right to go. Alright, so we're going to bang them on before we put the um, bearings in, just so if we knock anything about, it's not going to be in the hubs with the bearings. So we'll bang them on, and then we'll put the bearings on, and then we'll put the seals in it, and then we'll stick them back on the car. So there we go guys, new rotors on, ready to go. So now we'll put the bearings in it and then stick them back on the, back on the car. So before I stick this um, hub on, I thought I'd show you this stub axle. If you remember from the last one, I had a um, bit of trouble with this inner bearing. It was getting stuck on this stub axle and I had to use the slide hammer. So what I found that it was, was this little groove here where it's been hit with a chisel. It had expanded a little bit and it was just ever so slightly grabbing the bearing, just not letting it move. So what I did was I just got some sandpaper and just lightly rubbed it and um, took the high spot off it and now the bearing just slides over it really nicely. So we're going to use this stub axle. I was thinking about putting this one on it, but you know, this one's not bad enough to replace, so we'll stick the hub on and um, adjust her up and then we'll put the brake caliper on. I haven't got the little steel line, this one around the back here that snapped last time. I'm going to do something a little bit different with that than what Land Rover do. Um, you'll see that when I do it. Hubs on. Just that easy. So, when you're adjusting your earrings, what you want to do is just nip it up till you go till you feel it just grab the bearing back it off till it's loose give it a spin then you grab your nut do it up firm not tight just just firm just so you can only just sort of turn it now the air compressor is shut up so yeah what I was saying is you get it firm enough so that you can just turn it and that just um, seats the bearings and you just back it off till it's loose again give it another spin and then you just get it just till it goes firm and that's it and that's your bearing perfectly adjusted you shouldn't be able to spin it freely it shouldn't free spin because then you've got it too loose but you should be able to just turn it easily like that and you haven't got too much preload on it it's just it's just right there so that might even just be a smidge too tight so yeah that's a bit better but that's it that's as easy as it is to do your wheel bearings or adjust them anyway so we've got our lock nut on and our lock washer on now what we're gonna do is get our drive flange just wipe it off because it's got dirty again. 
get a dry flange, put some gasket goo on it. I'm using the side of it because the end of it's blocked. Um, the tube's just about dead, I think. <laughs> um, you can get gaskets for these. Sealing it with goo seems to work better. You don't seem to get um, the amount of water in it that you do um, when you just use gaskets. So I don't even run a gasket anymore. I just put way, 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 way too much on there. But anyway, as you can see, it's not going to leak. Line her up as close as you can. Get your bolts. So if you remember from the last video too, we had this bolt here, which was an odd one out. It was short and had a 15 mil head. I just happened to have one matching identically to the ones that were here. The other ones that were in it, sorry. So I'm going to use it instead of the one that doesn't match. So there's that done. Um, you don't want to go too hard on these bolts because they do have a habit of snapping. So do them tight, but not stupidly tight. And you got to pull the end of your CV out. So this old dry fledge bolt, they're not exactly the right thread, but they work just fine for pulling the CV back out of the flange. And then you just put circlip on and you're done. I do need to get some um, little rubber hubcaps for these, otherwise we'll just get water in them and we'll be back to square one. But I'll get some of them, they're only a couple of bucks. So I'll get some of them and stick in it and we'll be right. So, we've got our calipers in from outside now, all black and pretty looking. Right, turn that, make it a little bit easier. So if anyone who's worked on Land Rovers before you'd know this, but if not, the bolts for the brake calipers are multi-hex, so you need a 12 point socket, and they're 13 mil. So 13 mil, multi-hex, just drop one, and you'll get it every time. So there we go guys, rebuilt calipers, new pads, new pins, new springs, new rotors, repack bearings. So this front end will be good to go now. Um, I've got to get my, I've got a set of springs, uh, two inch lifted springs for the front here that I'm going to stick in it. They're, they're second hand but they're still alright, there's nothing wrong with them. So I'll stick them in it. Um, I haven't got them here, they're actually down where all my parts cars are, which is about four hours away, which is a little bit annoying, but anyway. But yeah, so we'll, we'll do them at another time, so I'm going to get the wheel, we'll stick the wheel on it, and yeah, have a look. So there we go guys, that's how it looks with the 35s on it, front and rear. It's not sitting on the ground, just because I haven't got the one on the other side yet, but we are going to need to put those two inch springs in it because I reckon she's going to hit up in here. But we'll, we'll deal with that. I don't know if I'm going to leave these on it. I do have a set of alloys, uh, Discovery alloys with 32s and all terrains that are good that I could stick on it. Let me know what you reckon, whether I should run these with the 35s or some Discovery alloys, which I'll show you here. 
with some 32s on it and um, yeah let me know what you reckon I like these tyres might be a little bit big for what I'm going for but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it so guys got it all back together I've got the wheel on it so we can see what it's going to look like I reckon it's going to look pretty sweet it's got a little bit of type oak there but I've got a way of fixing that we can I'll show you that if we are going to run these wheels in the end um, so yeah, I know we're going to have to go back in there to do those hard lines and springs and shocks and stuff, but at least I can drive around now like this. Um, so yeah, I'd like to give Harrison from Bearmack a massive shout out for getting me the parts um, that I needed, hooking me up with this sweet hat and got it all here from the UK in three days, which was pretty sweet. Um, yeah, massive shout out to Bearmack for that. So. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed, like, subscribe, share it with your mates, I hope to see you next time, have a good one.